Hey there, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be taking some time to look at the new action-based input for Unity's XR Toolkit. Where that's just a fancy phrase for, we're going to be utilizing Unity's new input system for our VR input. And this is going to significantly differ from the device-based input that we've used up until this point. And if we want to look at that a little bit closer in Engine here, we right-click within our hierarchy, we go down to XR, you'll see that we have these XR rigs that are action-based. And then we'll go to our device-based drop down here, and we'll see that we have our rigs that we've been using up until this point that are all device-based. And this system is kind of being phased out. I don't know exactly how long it's going to be available, but as of right now, when we're going to be getting input and tracking information, that's all going to be coming from the input system. To be more specific, the new input system. We will be taking a quick look at it, so don't worry about that too much. However, it may not be clearly apparent how we can use these action-based rigs which we will be going over in just a second, but before we do, let's actually look at some documentation. Where here we are on the Unity XR input page, and if you've ever looked up VR input, you've probably come across this page at one point or another, and you probably scrolled down to this input mappings table, took one look at it, and you were just like, you know what, maybe I'll do this another day. Though Unity does take care of a lot of this for us, as of right now, we're still working on a more perfect solution to get predictable input across all of our different controllers. And the new input system is going to help that be a little bit more clear. But let's go down a little bit further. Where up until this point, we've been using input features on devices. Where this line here may look fairly familiar, where we're getting our input device and trying to get a feature. In this case, it's gonna be our trigger and what our current value is. And if you've watched any of my other videos on input managers and things like that, you'll realize that this doesn't have a lot of functionality with it. It just simply gives us the value without any up or down events or on value change or anything like that. So there's actually a lot of work that's inherent with, with this currently existing system. Now this does get the job done, but obviously we can do a little bit better. And this is where Unity's new input system is going to take care of a lot of this for us. And if we want a more official definition of this, if we look at the XR Interaction Toolkit documentation, we'll see that it gives us this action-based versus device-based behaviors. It says, it is recommended that you use the action-based variant instead of the device-based variant to take advantage of the benefits that the input system package provides. Some features such as the XR Device Simulator are only supported when using actions, where I haven't covered that yet, but I will in a future video. But that just basically rephrases what I already said, where this new input system is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Um, and I'll link this page down in the description if you want a little bit more information on using actions and setting up your own custom behaviors. Because what we're going to be doing is just implementing the current default set that we have. So let's go into Unity so we can do that. Now that we're back in Unity and we're over here in our hierarchy, let's right click and let's go to XR and let's just hit Room Scale XR Rig. And it's through the floor and that bothers me. So I'm going to reset that really quick. And if we just expand the hierarchy here, we'll see that on our left and right hand controllers, we actually don't have any actions here. And if you wanted to make your own action set and you wanted to reference it directly, you could hit this checkbox and throw a little scriptable object in there that'll do the input for you. But you may be thinking, Andrew, I don't know how to do that. I'm not familiar with this new input system. I just want it to work. And why would I need to go through and click all these things and set it up manually? That's kind of a pain. And I completely agree. So let's see how we can actually make this a little bit easier. So let's actually remove this XR rig. Let's go to our package manager, go to the XR interaction toolkit. You want to make sure you're at least using 0.10. And then you'll see here that we have our default input actions and we can hit import into project. And you'll notice that it's going to give us this samples folder and it's going to give us all of these great default sets and our actions already set up for us. So if we want to, we can click in here and we'll see that we have these action maps for our headset as well as our left and our right hand, where we're going to have these actions that are going to be outputting the position value for our headset, the rotation, and then for our actual input on our hands. So we have the position and the rotation of the controller, the input for selecting and activating and all that good stuff. And the wonderful thing about this, let's say, let's go to our select here. We'll notice that it's using a generic grip pressed on the XR controller. If we wanted to say, well, maybe I want it on the Vive controller when I press the primary button or something. You could come in here, you can add a binding, go to the path. We'll then go to XR controller. And then in here, 
we have more specific XR controllers where if it's available here, we can just hit Vive 1 since I specifically said Vive. And then we could just use whichever input we wanted here. If we wanted to just the trackpad pressed here. And now anytime I want to select, we can either use the grip pressed on a generic XR controller or specifically for a Vive, we can do it when the trackpad is pressed. So that's where the power of this really comes into play, where we can be a little bit more deliberate with some of our inputs. Now we're going to delete this just in case. There we go. And now let's exit out of this. And you may notice we also have these sort of default sets here. Well, this will be a set of values that are going to automatically be used anytime we add a component or create a prefab that needs this sort of information. And even though we have the default input actions in our project, if we actually try and create a room scale rig again, and we go to the controller, we'll notice that it still hasn't been populated. And this is because we actually need to set a default set for our controllers here. So let's finally delete that again. Let's click on this guy and let's say add to action based controller default. So we'll do that for the left controller, we'll do that for the right controller, and I'll ignore the rest of this for right now since we're not going to be using it. And what this does, if we go to our project settings and our preset manager, it's going to add these two little objects here for any time we're going to have an action based controller. It's going to go look for these little objects here and populate our controllers with these values here. All right, and now that we got that out of the way, we still need to do a few more things for this to work properly. Let's go to our preset manager. And for these filters, we actually need to type something in here. If you notice that we have both this right and this left controller, we need to type in either right or left so we know which object we want to apply these presets to. So on our right controller, we need to type right. And then on our left controller, we need to type left. And with that, let's finally go into our hierarchy and hopefully create our last XR rig. So we'll go to our room scale XR rig. We'll expand it. And as you can see on our controllers here, everything has already been set up for us. And we're almost done. We just need to do one more thing to make sure we're activating all of our actions. You can either put this on its own game object or on the XR rig itself, but we need to add a component, which is going to be called input action manager. And this is going to enable all of the actions within a particular action set. So we'll set the size here to one. I'm going to hit the little dot here and we'll just have the XR ride default input actions right here. So if we click that, we'll see that it's populated. And now when we start our project, all of our actions should be enabled. So let's go to our scene. We will reset the transform on our XR rig. And now let's hit play to make sure this works. And as you can see here, as I look around the scene and wave around my controller, you can see that we're getting the accurate readings for our position and our rotational tracking. And that about does it for me in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.